Uh, speaking of Bentleys, there's big news out of the world of uh, Britain and the Royals. So uh, I love it. The Mark Thompson Show. I'm anxious to uh, talk about this controversy. I have my thoughts, and I don't really care, if I can say that, about the Royals. As you know, I was kind of like that whole thing with the crown and the, you know, uh, the coronation that just showed up. Then we had different uh, Britishers on here, some of whom agreed with me that it was no big deal or it was an, an anachronistic kind of uh, a weird holdover. And um, uh, others who thought, oh my God, this is a part of Britain's essence. It's in the DNA of Great Britain that we have this coronation. So this is sort of related to the world of royals that I am on record as saying, uh, for me personally, it doesn't, but I also... I understand the controversy, and this is pretty big, the idea somehow that there's this uh, uh, royal racism furor, and I felt ill-equipped to comment on this by myself, so I brought in my favorite Britisher, how about it, for the one and only Phil Fairclaw, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. How about that? Look at that. The Wow. Oh, that's magnificent. All right, Phil, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, nice to well, you have impressive glasses, too. Well, so you, not yeah. only do I have impressive glasses in the singular, I have these credibility glasses. But as I heard you introducing the show, I thought, well, maybe I need to up my credibility game a little <laughs> and present a potentially more uh, convincing intellectual demeanor. So I got these. Wow, those are very low. Wow, those are impressive. You know, not many faces can sell that. You know, the the thing the guy told me, and uh, he told me that, you know, your face is what he was talking to me. He said, your face really needs these glasses because it works with your other facial features. Uh, if you go too small or too big, it doesn't work, you know? I'll show you the difference. These are large. Yeah. And these, are, these, 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 I think, definitely convey a more sort of Kissinger-like intellectual <laughs> demeanor. It's I was going to go Tolstoy, but all right, go Kissinger. All right, yeah. All right. I'm a big fan of both. Um, <laughs> okay. But anyway, okay, we'll go with these. Final anyway, ones. so you, are, are you going to wear those for the duration of our conversation? On eBay and had them <laughs> re-lensed, so they're quite, oh. they're quite economical. Oh, I see. Well, impressive. A provenance there from eBay. A provenance is a ding word. Now, the uh, deal with the Royals is interesting to me. Uh, I will tell you up front that, uh, and we'll, we'll lay out a little bit, and Kim, if you need to jump in, you can give us a couple of the details here, but essentially there was a book, and then we, uh, we can weigh in on what, there was a book, um, and the book, I guess, is called Endgame, mm -hmm. and this uh, book is... Um, from this guy who talked to a bunch of the royals and it's got a lot of you know tantalizing stuff in it and gossipy stuff in it but the part that really has become truly radioactive is the part that showed up in the dutch edition of the book which actually but named isn't this what happened kim yeah named the person in the royal circle who asked about the uh, the color, right? I mean, it was a, literally the skin color. There was uh, a, this is what Prince Harry had said that there was a worry from one of his family members about how dark Archie's skin would be, hmm. right? And they never wanted to name the person. They wanted to to tell that story to say, look, there's racism here, but they didn't want to name the person. It wasn't about shaming. It was about listen, there's racism. So that person wasn't supposed to be named. But here's here's my question now they're trying to pull all these endgame books in dutch off the shelves but isn't it that's kind of once it's out it's out it's like kind of trying to delete a viral video once you have named the person they're named right well that's certainly true and yeah. what's happened is by trying to pull it off the shelves it's become you know an even hotter item <laughs> exactly and, the, and so so the person who was asking about the color of archie's skin and whether it would be uh, dark because of a mixed race child, right? Um, is is Char is Charles? You're saying is right, right? And that that's what you're. I mean, it uh, the king. Is that correct? Is that um, right? To, uh, that, uh, that, I, that is, I, I'll jump in here because yeah. I have. Um, I've just just. I'm relatively obviously one is aware of the 
ebb and flow, the constant ebb and flow and turbulence uh, surrounding the royal family. And it's just in the it's in the air in the same way that the Kardashians are in the air. Right? Thank you. OK, that's a good. Opinion. So we, 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 we're all breathing it and living it. And, and that's why I think many of us are just sort of. You know, it's like the weather. It comes and goes. We don't pay too much attention to it unless it's a hurricane or an avalanche that uh, is catastrophic and sweeps you away. But this is none of this is actually catastrophic, especially when you compare it, I think, to the truly sensational and constitution changing news that we should be paying attention to. This is chaff. This is hot air. But nevertheless, it's not to not to un, you know, diminish genuine concern about racism. Um, what I'm and indeed, there are the names that have been floated and published by The New York Post and indeed by uh, the the estimable Piers Morgan. Yes. Um, <laughs> To uh, the palace, the palace is now, word. Yeah, yeah. Palace is now. Oops. Boy, people really <laughs> want you today. Listen to all those sounds. How do you get anything done with all of those alarms going off all the time? That is a call from Queen Diambi of the Congo, who I met up with recently, on which another story, another another episode about protecting nature. I would but, love to talk about what Phil does. That really is a big part of it. But anyway, go back to the royals. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so, so I think that. The, there, there is, there is a very, very, very lucrative royal information and disinformation industry, which is supporting multiple books, multiple newspapers, magazines, the Daily Telegraph, which was the sort of, you know, read by the grandees uh, and, and the upper classes generally in in the UK, has a whole royal section every day. That's a lot of newsprint that has to be filled so anything even no matter how trivial it is or you know the merest sniff of a new bit of news is going to get is going to get blown up um now so what happened with, with, with phil essentially the, the these uh on the shelves and online in the netherlands the um unredacted uh version of this book hit and so family members weren't identified in the british or american editions but in describing this uh, entire dust up around this uh, names were used in this edition in the netherlands even as they tried to pull it off the shelves after they realized the mistake um none of the british papers initially published the names they only called it a senior royal who had the conversation but you know, yes. quickly, as you say, uh, Piers Morgan and everybody else uh, got got the word out. Um, so it, it is the king, right? I mean, uh, Buckingham Palace is now declining to comment. I'm seeing. Um, and yes, I mean it, it has been you know, Charles has been named, uh, as has Kate Middleton. I'm merely reporting what I'm reading. I have no uh, particular insights into this story, and. Um, I suppose I'm not very surprised. That's that's the uh, that that that's where I come down on this. Do, but do I think King Charles is a racist? The answer is no, unequivocally no. I I, I think there's a sort of historic racism, if you like, that imbues many many sort of older generations, it's a generational racism, and it's also part of, a, it, it's sort of endemic, I would say, in a particular class. And if you accept that Charles is of that class and of that generation, maybe it's not so surprising. Is it forgivable? Um, that's for everyone else to, to judge. Um, I think what the palace is now dealing with, however, is a complete turnover in the way that they have to sort of protect their brand, if you will. It's how, do, how does the brand of royalty get presented and perceived, not just by the British public now, but by the world? 
And they used to, they used to, I think, have a, there's a wonderful Japanese expression, mokusatsu, which you may know, it means to kill with contemptuous silence. Simply to not respond is to, is to ignore, I love that, to kill with contemptuous silence. If you give no credence to any of this, then it will go away, it will disappear. You're, you're not, you're not, you're, you're not acknowledging it, you're just dismissing it basically. But now they can't do that. Mokusatsu no longer works. Instead of protecting the brand, they have to project the brand. It's in a, we're in a different in media world, media landscape, and the royals are in a different landscape now. They're, they're not just principally a British fascination. Now they're a West Coast fascination as well. And that makes it a global fascination. And there is no minute or second of the day when there is not some new bit of drama that can be inflamed. So they have um, to deal with it. Yeah, it's interesting. You make such a good point. And, and, and I, it, it occurs to me that the, the crown and the royals and the brand has to evolve into the modern age, even as it is clearly a... Uh, a brand with a death grip on an age that's passed, in my view, you know, uh, so. Exactly. And what would you think about, well, what would uh, Elon Musk do or what would a Trump do or what would even a senior, you know, the foreign secretary do? Everyone is there responding on Twitter, on, sorry, X, I should say, showing my age here, but whatever their social media platform of choice is, they're responding on it. Can we imagine Prince, uh, the King, King Charles, responding? Don't be so ridiculous. Of course, I'm not racist. You, you can't. It, so they're in. They're in this. There is. There is a death grip in some senses on the brand. They're unable to, to, to play in the arena which everyone else plays it. Um, and therefore, I think the news. They're always likely to be victims of the news rather than presenting the news and that that's that's going to put them in bad light that's but a great not, point by the way they kind of just they're there taking a lot of incoming fire they're not you know it, it's it's uh and and here they are with these um you know, with the offspring writing books i mean harry wrote a book called spare and i guess there was a lot of stuff in that but he steered clear of this controversy and you know i want to say this phil uh, you kind of hinted at it when you said, you know, I don't believe Charles is, is a racist. Charles is on the right side of a lot of stuff that's important. The environment, he's a forward-thinking guy. He comes out of this, as I've just, say, uh, just said, this weird, you know, BS, utterly, I mean, blue blood kind of racist world. But he's quite forward-thinking in his uh, sense of the environment and the, the need and the alarm that uh, he strikes when it comes to conservation and this sort of thing. So... I just don't believe that that guy cared about the skin of his of his grandchild. I don't believe it. I, I, I'm calling it BS. I don't want to sound like Piers Morgan here, but I, again, I'm just I'm. You couldn't find a more objective party. I could give a rat's, but I'm telling you, this is just not true. I don't think it's true. I'm I'm with you. Uh, I fundamentally believe that Prince Charles is one of the most open-minded. Uh, broad thinking, forward thinking, I won't just say royals, I'll say public figures, certainly in the UK. As you know, and I think we've discussed, he embraced environmentalism and was sort of lambasted for this. There were these, you know, Charles was always depicted as walking around the garden talking to the flowers. But he was a, he was a leading light in the environmental movement and the importance of it in the UK. The, he, he was a member of the Commonwealth, is a member of the Commonwealth. So he's the leader of the Commonwealth. Um, the Commonwealth embraces all of Britain's former colonies and existing ones. But it, I, I went to, with my father, to Buckingham Palace when he received uh, a Queen's honour. He was with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office himself. I was struck by the enormous number the very diverse nature of people who were being given awards, all colors, all creeds, they were all members of the Commonwealth. I think Britain, for all its many, many faults, and for the insouciant racism that's there, and the overt racism, by and large, has done quite a good job, and this will probably get me into hot water, with embracing 
its past and trying to rectify and is going through that process now. And I think Charles is, pro, you know, without knowing him or what was said, is really not a racist. Yeah, uh, that's so well said. And uh, insouciant is a ding word, says Tom. That's exactly right. Uh, in our last few seconds with Phil Fairclaw, I wonder if you can tell me what you're working on now, because you're a television producer with a, a view toward a lot of stories that have to do with nature and wildlife and the environment. And I wonder if you could just speak to it quickly. Uh, well, yesterday, at this time yesterday, I was up to my armpits in a swamp in the Florida Everglades filming um, female female alligator, about an eight to ten foot long female alligator, as part of a story which um, I'm producing for a new, uh, a, a, a relaunch of a wonderful and important wildlife brand in this country called Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Sure. Uh, it's going to be on M well, it is on NBC on Saturday mornings. Uh, this was part of a part of a show about the Florida Wildlife Corridor, which is a really remarkable world leading um, initiative here in Florida. You don't get many <laughs> important and in, and uh, uh, and successful and and uh, let in, initiatives to do with the environment coming out of Florida. But this is this is. Uh, an effort to join wild space from the tip of South Florida all the way up to the border with Georgia. Right. And quite soon, more than half of this state will be protected land, allowing the free passage of animals like bears, panthers, Florida panthers, and everything else. It's really a remarkable and world leading initiative. So that's that terrific. I can't wait. So look, please come visit again and we'll talk about something other than uh, we'll, we'll make it the other way around. We'll talk mostly about the work you do, the important uh, message associated with this uh, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom and other uh, television stuff that you've really, you know, you've brought home to many of us having to do with nature. And then we'll talk maybe 10% about the Royals. <laughs> Deal. I'll tell, you, uh, I'll tell you about the white shark population that I filmed last week booming off the coast of California. I'm, guys, this guy who is going to be more of a frequent visitor on this show in the new year is the guy who you imagine, uh, you know, with a camera on his shoulder and, you know, in a swamp somewhere. He is a worldwide in the, the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Rwanda, you know, with the mountain gorillas, et cetera. This is your guy. Phil, I love that we visited here before the end of the year. Happy holidays. And let's see more of you in the new year, pal. And to you and yours. Uh, Phil Fairclaw, everyone. It's uh... oh yes, take him out with the Britannia music. I love it. Does it get any better? Come on. All right. Bye, bye, Phil. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.